This conference will now be recorded. Okay, welcome to the class, all of you. So uh, today we'll be discussing um, this uh, nice guideline for abortion because it has come new in uh, 2019 and also a topic pregnancy and miscarriage again uh, nice because it is also a new guideline. So it is important for exam. Okay. So, now coming to abortion. So I'll be starting with the abortion guideline. And uh, what they want is a pre-abortion care. So uh, ideally, if the woman uh, want an abortion, so uh, within a one week of uh, um, her request, assessment has to be done. Okay. Now, if uh, it has been decided that yeah, she is a candidate for abortion, then uh, abortion could be done within a week of assessment. Okay. So these two things are important for even both part two and part three people. If you read abortion leaflet, you will find they have written five working days. So five working days or one week, it, it is the same thing, okay? Then, uh, uh, like uh, whenever the abortion assessment has to be done, so it can be done even on the phone, even the, uh, on the video call also. Apart from this, abortion is not associated with any risk of infertility, breast cancer, and long-term health issues. So this part, this line is important. And this line is important for uh, for part two people. You will get question from here, and for part three people because the role player will ask this question in the um, exam. Like uh, uh, any issues can, that can come up with an abortion. Okay. Apart from this abortion, why we are doing abortion? Abortion we are doing because uh, uh, she's uh, like uh, this is an unplanned pregnancy. So whenever you uh, when uh, whenever the abortion counseling is done, or patient has come for abortion. It is always worthwhile to discuss in contraception. Okay. Otherwise, she'll, uh, there will be unplanned pregnancy again and there will be abortion again. Okay. So, this is the pre abortion care. Everything is uh, uh, whatever I'm speaking is from the NICE guideline. Okay. So, apart from pre abortion care, now the abortion has been decided. So, abortion assessment has to be done. Now, there are two things that you know we we really need to know so these are the std std so antibiotic uh, prophylaxis so uh, antibiotic prophylaxis for, for the woman who is going for medical abortion that is you know it is not uh, like uh, recommended or it is a routine okay so the, the, there will be a risk assessment but if a, a woman is going for surgical abortion so that time antibiotic prophylaxis has to be given because what the RCOG says that for any uh, like uh, for any uh, in, intrauterine in, instrumentation, there could be the possibility and there could be in, uh, in risk of infection. So uh, surgical for any surgical um, uh, abortion antibiotic prophylaxis has to be given. OK, apart from this, now this has changed. So, like uh, previously, they used to give doxycycline, like 200 milligram before. But now, in this guideline, what they have said that the oral doxycycline, 100 milligrams twice daily for three days. Okay. So now, uh, the, this has been changed in this guideline. So for part two people now, this and uh, if they ask about antibiotic prophylaxis in case of abortion, so answer will be uh, or doxycycline only. Okay, doxycycline two times daily for three days. Now coming to uh, if, uh, but on the other side, if the for antibiotic prophylaxis, metronidazole has been used. Okay, if the metronidazole has been used, then uh, it is not necessary that it has to be combined with a doxycycline. Okay, so it is not like that that you have to give two antibiotics. So it can be like she can go ahead with a one antibiotic. So the take home message so for surgical abortion, antibiotic prophylaxis has to be done. And the, according to this new guideline, what they recommend is oral uh, doxycycline, 100 milligram, two times daily for three days. Okay. Now coming to VT prophylaxis. So what they say that a woman, uh, whenever the patient is going for uh, abortion, so VT risk assessment has to be done. And accordingly, uh, if it is required, then I they can consider uh, low molecular weight heparin for at least seven days after abortion. Okay, but if the woman is at more high risk on the risk assessment, then consideration for this heparin 
for even more longer time longer time can be done okay so this part has been newly okay, you need put up in the guideline you guys may get question from the, the, uh, the part two people will get question from this part apart from whenever the part three people are doing station of abortion so now they have to keep this uh, you know um, vt risk assessment in their um, answer so these are the pre abortion assessments now uh, what they say um, a usg uh, update before an abortion so if the usg has been done and they are not able to see like definitive ev evidence of, of pregnancy is not there but this woman is not having a sign and symptom of ectopic so they can consider abortion abortion can be done but if the abortion is done in these women when uh, intra uh, uh, ultrasound evidence of intra part uh, intra uterine pregnancy is not there in that particular situation uh, explanation has to be done the, uh, uh, what explanation there could be a chance of ectopic there so they should be given follow up appointment and they should be given 24 hour contact details also okay so uh, this is abortion can be done um, if the we are not able to si see the signs uh, sign of intra uterine pregnancy but it will be worthwhile that the patient has to be explained what are the what can happen because uh, ectopic pregnancy still not have been ruled out because the intra uterine pregnancy was not seen on the scan okay now coming to the uh, uh, ntd profile axis what this new guideline is saying again the favorite of uh, you know uh, this are uh, nice guidelines and rcog so offer because for part 2 people this offer and consider becomes very important not for part 3 people so offer and like if any time uh, uh, abo uh, abortion is having after 10 weeks okay after 10 weeks it is uh, you need to offer that means it is must to, uh, to give ntd profile access for um, and uh, uh, like uh, D, uh, rh negative women okay but uh, uh, the red line that you have to remember that if the medical abortion is done and medical abortion is done till 10 weeks of pregnancy no ntd profile access is required so you guys will get question from here and part 3 people they have to explain it uh, um, to their role player okay apart from this now uh, so this is offer yes you have to give this is uh, no entity you need not to give now you you can consider consider means that you have to see whether you have to give or you, you you may not have to give so that is a consider okay then when the form recommendation is not there that is consider so if the patient is going for surgical abortion um up to 10 weeks including 10 plus 0 weeks so you can consider okay so these are the three things so after 10 weeks there is after 10 weeks of uh, whenever they are going uh, abortion so they have to be given anti uh, ntd prophylaxis so this thing is clear uh, second uh, uh, the woman if they are less than 10 weeks and medical abortion no ntd is required but if surgical abortion is done up to 10 weeks surgical abortion up to 10 weeks that time you have to consider ntd so this line you have to remember for part 2 people because if they give the, uh, uh, consider as an option and the patient is going for abortion up to 10 weeks so you have to choose, choose this option because it is in the guideline okay so this this part has to be very clear if it is not clear you know the answer is going to be wrong so uh, uh, uh till till now uh, anyone has got any question okay no question for so sometimes no dr priyata they will give mm -hmm. they will give the options like this they will not you consider offer they will just give Uh, a patient with eight weeks of pregnancy going for surgical evacuation. The options will be NTD to be given, uh, like NTD, and something else will be there. At that time, we will give NTD, right? Because it yes, is consideration is there, so we have yeah, to yeah, mark NTD. Yeah, you have to give. Oh. You have to give. Better idea would be to remember this red line that a medical abortion less than ten weeks, no NTD. Now, thrombo profile axis. 
Thermo profile axis, you know, it is not uh, uh, like we you, you guys have read your 37A number guideline. So there is a table is there. What are the risk factor for VTE? Though they uh, they have uh, told the pregnancy risk factor, but same the type of risk uh, risk factor will be for non-pregnant women also. Okay, so they have to do the risk assessment. So according to risk assessment, if this patient is at risk, so they will assess it. So they will consider um, heparin, low molecular weight heparin for seven days. But if she's at very high risk, like very high BMI is there, or uh, for example, she's pre uh, previously taking any anticoagulants. So maybe they will consider it for longer time. OK, so it cannot be uniform thing. OK, so according to patient, they will assess. But yes, any woman is going for surgical abortions. VT risk assessment has to be there. Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Now, what they say for the medical abortion, so update about the medical abortion. So the woman who is going like uh, uh, um, for medical abortion, so they uh, like uh, uh, first they have to take mifepristone. Mifepristone, we already know that is anti-progesterone and it causes, uh, you know, blockage of the pregnancy hormone. So up, uh, till 10 weeks. But after that, they will give mifepristone, uh, sorry, mesoprostol. So less than 10 weeks or 10 plus zero weeks, mesoprostol can be taken at home or at the clinic, or even they can consider expuls expulsion of pregnancy at the home also. But this is valid for less than 10 weeks. So uh, home expulsion and mesoprostol at home and uh, um, uh, home clinic or hospital. So these are these two possibilities are there if the pregnancy is less than 10 weeks. And it is worthwhile even, uh, you know, because the more gestation in, of pregnancy increases, chances of bleeding are very high. So if it is more than that, it has to be in, under observation in the hospital. But you you guys will get question from here, okay? You guys will get question from here. Apart from this, uh, uh, now 10 weeks, we have 10 weeks plus zero days, they have said, now, uh, what is the what they have said uh, from 10 weeks till 24 weeks from 10 weeks till 24 weeks? Uh, what is the regime? 200 milligram if you press stone, then uh, uh, after 36 to 48 hours, mesoprostol has been given. So uh, so it is initially either 800 microgram given vaginally. So if they are giving vaginal dose, it is high 800 milligram. But it can be given sublingually. If it is given sublingually, then it is 600 milligram. So after, like, this is the initial dose. After initial dose, they will give 400 milligram. 400 milligram, it can be given by any route, vaginal, buccal, or sublingual. And it it, it is it is repeated every three hours until exp expulsion. Now, why this part is important? Because in the part two SBA. They will give, you know, uh, like a, a very confusing uh, uh, doses, 800 milligram, for, uh, like uh, uh, three hourly, 600 milligram, three hourly, like this type of uh, option they give. So you will, uh, and it becomes very confusing at that time. So it is very important that you have to know the dose and the roots so that you can pick the right answer. Otherwise, everything appears safe. So for, for 10 weeks to 10, uh, 24 weeks, it is mifepristone uh, uh, followed by uh, a, a gap of 36 to 48 hours. After that, meso. So meso 800 gram, a microgram, if it is given vaginally. So vaginally, we are giving higher dose, OK? If it is 600 microgram, it is sublingually. OK, so this you have to remember. Apart from this, now if the abortion is not there, so we would repeat it. Repeat dose will be 400 micrograms three hourly. 400 micrograms three hourly till the expulsion is there, okay? Now this is a very important uh, sort of a table and uh, the situation, uh, the thing. Like what, uh, um, what we have done here till 24 weeks. But if the medical abortion is there for tw in between 24 to 25 weeks, like two weeks uh, they have in till 25 weeks, so mifepristone is same that we already know. It is 200 milligram. And after 36 to 48 hours, it has to be followed by mesoprostol. 
like and it can be done given with a, any root vaginal buccal and sublingual but where is the change here is the change if you see this table at the bar, uh, like top you will find like in uh, everything is same but here is the change in in 24 to 25 weeks mesoprostol is 400 microgram and it is a uh, three hourly till delivery okay 400 milligram mi microgram mesoprostol repeated three hourly now if we, you come to next three weeks that is 25 weeks to 28 weeks just look at the table then the dose is reduced to 200 and uh, it is given four hourly so now you can see see the trend dose is increasing and duration is increasing sorry dose is decreasing as the number of weeks of pregnancy increasing dose of mesoprostol is getting decreased and duration time interval is getting increased okay so you will get this much knowledge is not not important for part three people because you guys need not to know that much but for, for part two people you will get question from this table so it was uh, so this is the from the guideline but again it becomes very difficult to remember okay so just remember if you are able to just go through this table then your life is easy because you will get questions part two people you will get question within lines okay you will get question within lines so just remember this table so uh, 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 initially it will be mifepristone there will be gap of 36 to 48 hours this will be followed by mesoprostol mesoprostol can be given by any root vaginal buccal and sublingual and this is the dosage okay so this is the dosage so uh, 24 to 25 weeks 400 microgram three hourly 25 to 28 uh, weeks 200 microgram four hourly after 28 weeks now it's a big pregnancy so it is 100 microgram six hourly so and uh, so what it is showing the table is also showing same thing uterus become more sensitive to mesoprostol as pregnancy advances therefore as the pregnancy is advancing number of guests period of number of uh, like uh, period of gestational pregnancy is increasing so we are decreasing the dose and we are increasing the interval apart from why we are worried about it because rupture can happen where where rupture happens it happen if there is a uterine scar like previous cesarean it can happen in increased gestational age multi parity okay so uh, uh, part two people will get question from this line also now th that's all that is the update they have given about medical abortion okay and now coming to surgical abortion in surgical abortion it is done surgically so what we, uh, where we are uh, what we are doing that we are doing cervical priming so what the regime they has given for cervical priming so like uh, it is after uh, like 30 uh, from the 30 uh, per, uh, we 13 weeks plus six days so what what is the uh, what could be the use uh, what are the modes that is possible it is micro 400 microgram if it, if you if the mesoprostol is given given sublingual okay so doses will be so uh, it will be like less time because it acts fast so uh, sublingual one hour before abortion same we do in our hospitals also we mm -hmm. we just ask uh, you know nurse to put two do, two uh, like uh, two tablets of uh, mesoprostol one hour before it is the same thing but if it is vaginal then it will take more time to act so three hours before an abortion apart from this uh, like this is uh, this um i have never seen in the practice but it is done people are uh, like what they recommend for the cervical priming even the mifepristone can be used okay mifepristone for priming but again as, as you know mifepristone it will take longer time to act so the duration if um for cervical priming if we are using mifepristone so it has to be given 24 to 48 hours before okay so just remember this so these are the agents for cervical priming sublingual mesoprostol 400 microgram only one hour before vaginal mesoprostol if it is given it is three hours before same thing we do in our hospitals in our clinics and if the mifepristone is used we have it has a, it will take longer to act so we have to give 24 to 48 hours before okay now coming to uh, 14 to 16 weeks in 14 to 16 weeks everything is same but they are using osmotic dilator 
along with it and what is this osmotic dilator i don't know i'll i'll, I'll just share some of things um, like when i was uh, in um, like uh, during my training so we in our hospital we used to use this uh, osmotic dilator so um, the, like it was it used to come from the market in form of a matchstick okay it looked like a matchstick with a thread mm -hmm. at the end so one day before we used to put inside the cervix and next day or uh, like uh, next day evening after 24 hours so with the thread we used to like remove that dilator so that used to work very nicely very good dilatation it is used to happen with that so that is osmotic dilator okay i don't right now i'm not in a i'm not able to remember the name of that but it was the osmotic dilator we you we we have you i have used myself and coming to 16 to 19 weeks it is the same thing but this uh, um, but they have removed from in 16 to 19 weeks they're not giving me fipristone but uh, the, there is no explanation to it why in this group 16 to 19 they have removed uh, this thing they have removed uh, um, like mifepristone so th there is no update about it but in my clinical opinion it can be given now coming to 19 to 24 weeks it is the same thing okay osmotic dilators can be given mifepristone can be given uh, 24 to 48 hours before but one what one thing they are doing here when like this is a bigger pregnancy uh, 19 to 24 weeks is very big pregnancy so what they are doing they are giving mifepristone orally apart from this same day same day they are inserting the dilator so two things will happen simultaneously this mifepristone it will cause uh, you know blockage of the uh, pregnancy hormone and osmotic dilator it will cause dilatation of the cervix okay so uh, this this is the update in between 19 to 23 weeks and similar kind of, uh, and for 24 uh, 14 to uh, 23 weeks what they say osmotic dilator can be inserted so they are using osmotic osmotic dilators um, but osmotic dilators and uh, uh, this mesoprostol both are the dilators so what they are saying that if the osmotic dilator uh, uh, has been used then mesoprostol should not be offered why because both are dilator both are doing same thing so you will not insert at the the two dilators what they are saying it, uh, like it um, if the for cervical priming if one dilator osmotic dilator has been inserted so mesoprostol should not be used okay this is what they are saying so that that is all update about the dilators so take home message about the dilators what i can say is like uh, till 14 weeks this is our, our normal hospital routine we do okay so no uh, there will be no problem in remembering in sum up 400 microgram mesoprostol one hour before vaginal mesoprostol if you are giving you will ask your nurse to give three hours before if mifepristone it is always 24 to 40 hours before just remember this apart from this like uh, 14 to 6 after 14 weeks after 14 weeks okay they are inserting osmotic dilators also rest doses are same so they are inserting osmotic dilator also apart from the uh, 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 like and when the bigger pregnancy is there Osmotic dilator and mifepristone can be done simultaneously in a day, but osmotic dilator and mesoprostol should not be given in the same same sitting or same day. So that is the update about it. And any one of you have got any question with regards to that? Because you know whatever I have put here is everything from the nice guideline because I can't uh, change anything. Any question till now? No. Okay, so what the update they have given for anesthesia and sedation? So either it can be done in local anesthesia, it can be done in the conscious sedation with local anesthesia, it can be done in the general anesthesia. And what they say that if the conscious sedation is is there, so it has to be IV rather than oral. Okay, part two people can get question from this line. Apart from this, if the short general anesthesia is used, so they consider IV propofol. That is a short, uh, short acting opioid, uh, such uh, along with it, uh, opioid fentanyl, fentanyl for inhal uh, rather than inhalational, uh, like complete inhalational, inhalational um, anesthesia. 
so uh, even in the in we are using the same thing so we uh, gave uh, propofol and uh, also fentanyl okay for the uh, it is the shortest acting anesthesia so by that time you know you um, you just clean and you put uh, um, off the drape by that time your patient will sit okay so this is uh, this the, you you can uh, um, you people can get question from here also now coming like, like abortion why the abortion why the patient comes for abortion because the unplanned pregnancy is there so it is will be worthwhile that the contraception counseling has to be done so full range of reversible contraception are available for this woman so if she want to choose implant then they can be done um, uh, on the day of surgery or it can be taken on the day of mifepristone iuc it uh, or intrauterine device at the same time of the surgical abortion even we are doing same thing okay but on the other side this part is to remember if woman is use, choosing a medical abortion and they want dmpa so dmpa is progesterone and medical uh, and this um, nifepristone is anti progesterone so there could be some uh, you know uh, action reaction so uh, uh, what they say if the injection is done at the same this, uh, uh, at this stage it may increase the chances of um, ongoing pregnancy because if the injection is given it may hamper the with the you know working of mifepristone so uh, there is a, a, a slim chances that the risk of um, ongoing pregnancy is more okay so you guys can get some question from here also apart from this they assess after follow up of the uh, after medical abortion so uh, like they can it is their choice if they want remote assessment with a telephone or text messaging that can be done or um, they can come to clinic okay that's all about the abortion guideline that has come so any anyone has got any question till now can ask me uh, then i will explain the abortion law okay no questions good so abortion law okay so it is important for you know everyone who is appearing for this exam part 2 people they get question and part 3 people sometimes something sometimes they require to apply abortion law in their station so what is abortion law so ideally uh, this is abortion law uk okay um, it it came in 1697 but later on some amendments has been there so uh, uk abortion law so according to that it has to be performed by registered medical pr practitioner it has to be performed in a place that has been improved uh, that has been approved for this purpose by the act so a doctor has to be registered place has to be registered second it has to be done by two registered medical uh, practitioners as justified one or more under following uh, grounds so like what Uh, like two people has to uh, you know uh, justify or two people has to sign but there are clauses clauses in uh, uh, f and g where the emergency abortions are done in in clause uh, uh, in case of emergency abortions uh, uh, f and g clauses if, even with the one sign abortion can be done okay even in the if with the one sign abortion can be done now these are the clauses No, there is no other way you have you guys have to remember it you have to understand this and uh, because it will be required so what is clause a continuation of pregnancy would cause risk to life of a pregnant woman greater than pregnancy um, uh, uh, terminated b termination of pregnancy is necessary to prevent permanent grave injury okay permanent grave injury to physical or mental health of a pregnant woman c c ground continuation of pregnancy will involve risk greater than continuation of pregnancy or uh, injury to physical mental health of pregnant woman okay so uh, d continuation of pregnancy would involve risk greater than pregnancy terminated of injury to physical mental health of previous uh, pre any existing children of the family of pregnant woman okay so the maximum abortions are done in uk under c and d category only okay now coming to and the limit for c and d is 24 weeks 
if it crosses more than 24 weeks then uh, you know abortion cannot happen abortion cannot happen in c and d category now coming to e so e um, is sort of a emergency situation type um, uh, uh, like uh, it is um, few uh, it is the risk uh, like it would involve the group if the child is born that will have a physical mental abnormalities and likely to be a handicapped child or it is an emergency there are uh, uh, the, um, this will be this will put in the category e okay so like you you will find there would be a question where patient will have an, an encephaly in that uh, the abortion can be done like at 28 weeks 30 weeks 32 weeks because the ch child will bo born out an encephalic baby will be handicapped so in category e or clause e abortion can be done at any stage of pregnancy so this understanding is important because you know when you do questions then you struggle from where you will get answer f is a clause this is f and g are emergency okay it is important to save life of a pregnant woman you are doing emergency and something has come she is pregnant and you have to do abortion to save her life the category will be f okay and only one and only one person is required to sign g clause when there is a permanent injury happen to physical mental health of a pregnant woman that is again uh, uh, emergency situation so f and g are emergency situations and only one doctor sign with a sign of a one doctor abortion can happen okay so this is this you have to understand i'm speaking again so for c and d these are the categories where majority of abortion happens and the cat and the um, limit for it is 24 weeks e uh, there is no limit even for a and b is there is no limit a b and e there is no limit abortion can happen at any time and uh, for e will be the questions where baby will be born like um, uh, uh, like um, physically or mentally handicapped f and g are em emergency abortions okay now coming to that uh, this is a, again uh, so part of it like uh, most of the abortion usually happen in c and d okay so uh, uh, usually if the abortions are happen in c and d so there is a certificate a or h s a form one or certificate a it has to be signed by the two doctors okay and it is before the abortion why because there is no emergency in an emergency certificate b has to be completed and it has to be done uh, not later than 24 uh, hours after abortion okay so time limit for uh, category uh, uh, for clause c and d is 24 weeks okay now you just re uh, read this line for a b and e abortions are without time limit okay a b and e abortions are without time limit apart from this like uh, uh, there is a h uh, h a s uh, four form is there that has to be uh, sent uh, to the like chief medical uh, officer within 14 days of termination okay so uh, h a s uh, form four this form has to be sent to the cmo at within uh, uh, 14 days so previously it has to be uh, sent in a, a sealed envelope but it can be submitted online as well so these are the few updates that you know uh, you um, you have to know that you have to know okay so this all about the abortion act so um, any question any question about abortion act No question. Okay. Okay. So that's all about abortion uh, that I had to say. So it covers abortion, a nice abortion guideline apart from uh, along with it, abortion law. Now coming to uh, the second guideline. Now it coming starting with the topic pregnancy. So what the guidelines say, like topic pregnancy, there could be some common symptoms and uh, there could be some other symptoms so common symptom 
with what the patient will present these it will be pain it could be amenorrhea or it could be vaginal bleeding other symptoms that can come is breast tenderness gastrointestinal symptoms and if there is a, like um, any bleeding site there it could be dizziness fainting or synco shoulder tip pain urinary symptoms passage of tissue rectal pressure or pain or on defecation so this part this is important to remember because why it happens so this uh, if there had been a bleeding and if the collection of blood is there in the pouch of douglas so it creates a pressure on the rectum so there is a like pain on defecation and tenesmus is there so it it is also a sign of ectopic pregnancy okay though it they have kept it at the end but yes tenesmus happens because of the irritation of the collected blood in the pouch of douglas now uh, when you see a patient what will be the common signs so it could be like pelvic tenderness it could be adnexal tenderness adnexal tenderness usually we see an abdominal tenderness okay and there could be some sign there could be cervical motion tenderness rebound tenderness or peritoneal signs if you know there had been a collection inside women can be paler there could be abdom uh, abdominal distension tachycardia uh, there could be shock collapse and orthostatic hypotension okay so these are the sign so but more commonly you will get in the patient of ectopic pregnancy is uh, is all this tenderness most of this if you you just keep a hand over the abdomen so there will be abdominal or pelvic tenderness and if you do pv there will be adnexal tenderness now uh, symptoms or, uh, and signs of uh, ectopic pregnancy like sometimes they may make uh, the uh, uh, like gastroenteritis and urinary tract infection so whenever a woman whenever a woman uh, is come like reproductive age women they are coming uh, with uh, showing the symptoms of gastroenteritis or urinary tract infection it will be worthwhile uh, checking whether uh, you know any uh, um, pregnancy test is positive okay so because the women may present with this symptom also now this number is important so uh, like ectopic pregnancy we know uh, there are certain risk factors are there but in one third of the women with an ectopic pregnancy there will be no risk factor so this part you have to like part two people has to remember that one third of the women with an ectopic pregnancy they will have no risk factor this part will be asked in part two part three people it is not important now uh, uh, like many times you will find a question, uh, answer to an uh, question refer to uh, e uh, pau that is a early pregnancy assessment unit this early pregnancy assessment unit you know these are the, the units they take care of the pregnancy less than 12 weeks and they are open uh, in a uh, like uh, like maybe 9 to 5 or 9 to 6 like these hours they are uh, open they are not open whole the time okay therefore you will find in the guideline and also sometime in the question so referral to e p a u and but out of the service if like if patient has a problem at night and this is unit is closed so they will go to gynecology service in emergency or they will go to accident in emergency okay like in our, in our country we say okay the patient has to be go for emergency but in uk it is always accident and emergency a n e okay so now if the patient uh, has pregnancy test positive and you have done examination on the examination if you find any tenderness refer this patient why we are worried about ectopic okay so any kind of tenderness abdominal tenderness pelvic tenderness or cervical motion tenderness on examination refer this woman immediately okay we are missing out something there could be ectopic pregnancy but if the patient has patient comes and she has only bleeding bleeding is associated with pain then also we will be worried will refer this woman and if it is pregnancy of more than 6 weeks with pay, uh, with bleeding okay or if it is uncertain gestation in all these things because the bleeding associated with pain with unknown gestation we don't know what is what is happening inside and this is a big pregnancy any pro, uh, uh, complication may come up so this patient would require referral okay 
now if the, if this kind of patient they usually may, uh, like if there is no pain so patient is in early pregnancy they are coming with an a uh, bleeding but pain is not there so if pain is not there on risk assessment any risk factor like previous ectopic pregnancy any risk factor is not there so in this woman ex expectant management has to be done now you have to understand when the on clinical examination some tenderness was there we were referring the patient and if the pain uh, if the bleeding is there with pain or with bigger gestation we were referring those women but on the other side if only bleeding is there and pregnancy small pregnancy less than 6 weeks okay bleeding pregnancy less than 6 weeks and no pain so we are not too much worried then we ask this uh, then we uh, advise them uh, to report if any issues with the bleeding or pain comes up otherwise they have to do pregnancy test after 7 to 8 uh, uh, 7 uh, uh, and 10 days if it is positive that means pregnancy is continuing so their antenatal care plan has to be made but if the pregnancy test becomes negative that means pregnancy has already miscarried okay so the woman you will get question from there so now you have to understand if the pregnancy is less than six weeks only bleeding is an issue no pain so patient can be managed conservatively apart from this all other patient uh, with pain with with uh, like higher gestation and with on clinical examination any tenderness they would require referral now it is very important to you know this is a few new things that has been added in the guideline it was not there from in the previous guideline so i tried to put some pictures to explain it so how the diagnosis for ectopic pregnancy will be done so sometime it appears as an adnexal mass but this adnexal mask will move a, a separate from the ovary okay and this mask sometime it will have sac or yolk sac or sometime it will have sac yolk sac and uh, uh, like fetal heart also now if you see, if you can see picture above so uh, like uh, 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 like the, it is the ectopic pregnancy and you can see like uh, this is uh, in the adnexa if you see picture down below so there is the um, lo, uh, like right uh, or left ovary that is separate and there is a mass that is separate so in ectopic pregnancy usually you will find an adnexal mass and this adnexal mass sometimes it may contain sac sometimes it may contain sac or yolk sac and fetal heart may or may not be positive or negative okay apart from this what they say if the adnexal mass is there and it is moving separate to ovary so it is moving so that, that this is this sign is called as a bl uh, blob sign so the, in the picture one you can see the, uh, there is a mass separate to ovary but if you know you do in scan it start it moves separate from the, to the ovary so this sign will be a blob sign okay blob sign apart from this if if the um, like uh, an excel mass is there separately from the ovary and uh, uh, like uh, apart from this um, gestation shake is appearing that is appearing as a tubal ring or echogenic mass so that is called as a bagel sign if you see picture uh, down so you will see that uh, there uh, like there is an uh, adnexa there is an echogenic uh, you know echogenic uh, uh, like uh, ring is there that is showing uh, uh, showing this thing gestational sac so this is called as a, a tubal ring sign or a bagel sign so it is a sign of tubal ectopic and echogenic ring that surround uh, an uh, unruptured ectopic pregnancy so this is unruptured because if 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 it is already ruptured you will find a mass but if it is unruptured and then it is a bagel sign so like this is a just an uh, ultrasound uh, explanation of blob sign and uh, tubal ring sign or bagel sign because one time in the exam question with this bagel sign has already come i, I don't know one or two years back the question uh, has come i I'm, i don't know the question but i know that the uh, you know they have put something with a bagel sign so it is important that you have to know this apart from this this is not for this is this uh, is not from the guideline but it is important to understand therefore uh, you know i have put this picture usually what happens uh, when, whenever there is a intra this is this is this slide is not from nice okay 
so uh, usually what happens the uh, whenever the pregnancy happens uh, like uh, deciduous parietalis that is a lining of uterine cavity so it forms a layer another deciduous capsularis that is the lining of gestational sac it is from another layer so usually there are the, so, um, so it appears as two concentric rings are there okay so there will be a sac and outside the sac there will be two rings so one ring will be of lining of gestation sac another ring uh, will be lining of uterine cavity okay and these two rings then they combine and form placenta later on so if two rings are there uh, if you see the picture the things are very clear so if it, if if two rings are there if two rings are there um, surrounding the sac so this is called as a dds that is a double decidual sex sign this slide is not from uh, nice but it is this information is important okay this information is important why it is important now i'll tell you so what happens if you do a pregnancy if you do a scan so uh, you know you will find like if you see the picture above so you will find a pseudo sac pseudo sac means there is only one eco, uh, ring will be there so the ecogenic ring that is formed by the lining of uterus will be there but the ring that is formed by sac will not be there so now see this is the true sac there are two two uh, ecogenic lines are there but in uh, like pseudo pregnancy uh, only one line uh, uh, like in pseudo sac only one line is there it is important because the mis uh, mistakes can happen here now if you uh, what they see uh, because this is from the guideline so signs of possible ectopic you are doing scan and you see you know uh, uterus is empty if uterus is empty then you know there will be no problem okay there is no pregnancy or, or pregnancy is outside somewhere but the problem happens if you see a pseudo sac then to uh, to anyone who is doing scan it will appear yes the baby is in, uh, like it is the sac but actually it is not the sac it is collection of fluid inside the uterus and there is a ecogenicity or ring come that is the uh, you know um, that, that uh, lining of the uterus so it will be therefore i have exp to explain this i have explained double decidu uh, decidual sign because double decidual sign will only be present in intra uterine pregnancy and if it is one single ring is present, then it will be pseudo sac. I wanted to explain this term of pseudo sac, therefore I have explained so much. Now, if, uh, up, uh, if the pseudo sac is there, then uh, uh, like uh, uh, you are not able to see pregnancy uh, inside the uterus, and also there is a pseudo sac. Then you will see uh, complete features of adnexa. You will see patient's clinical presentation and serum HCG level then you will come to a diagnosis okay then you will come to a diagnosis again if you see more very large amount of ecogenic fluid on the um, pod now see, see this is this is uterus okay so this is uterus this is empty uterus though the lining you know endometrium lining it is not that clear in the scan now you see the fluid so this is the fluid i put the red marker here this is the fluid you know all this 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 so if you see this kind of situation or picture, then it is hemoperitoneum, it is rupture ectopic. Like, um, so I have, I, 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 I'm a person who do ultrasound very regularly and I've seen this picture many times, okay? So this happens and for you, why you, I'm, I'm explaining you guys this with a picture because in the exam, you will get, get a lot of question and sometimes they will write uh, ecogenic fluid and something, they will write something so if you have got a uh, like a picture you have seen then it gives you a, a good visual impression even the answering of the question become very easy so uh, any question till now before i move into the management of ectopic pregnancy anyone have please, got ma'am please explain blob sign and um, tubal bagel sign i mean little bit confused okay um, okay so uh, usually, um, see in the in the ectopic pregnancy, there will be uh, ovary will be separate, and there will be a, a an axial mass or homogeneous mass, and this mass 
if you do a scan it will move separate to ovary so if you see a homogeneous complex mass separate to ovary so this is blob sign okay so this is blob sign this is one situation second situation you uh, you are doing a scan and in the uh, like um, separate from the ovary you are seeing ecogenic ring you can see ecogenic ring that is the sac sac only okay ecogenic ring sign so this sign is called as a tubal ring sign or bagel sign this is this is the diagnosis that helps in diagnosis of ectopic pregnancy on the other side if you are able to see bagel sign you are confirmed that it is not ruptured at all is it clear yes ma'am yes okay now uh, coming to uh, it, no, management of ectopic pregnancy okay so there are three options options are expectant management or uh, uh, medical management and surgical management so you have to understand this very well because you will get a, a part two people will get a direct question so you have to apply these criteria and the answer will come just like a mathematics for part 3 people it is important because they will give a scenario and you will have 2 minute and you have to find out what type of uh, treatment um, what type of options i am in a position to offer this woman okay so it will be like that situation so again offer and consider you have to know what is expectant management for ectopic pregnancy patient has to be stable and pain free okay the sac has to be less than 3.5 cm and there should be no heart no heart and uh, hcg level less than uh, 1000 and patient is a compliant patient we can offer our expectant management what is that we'll say we'll just follow up the patient we are not doing anything so in like if, if the hcg at the level of 1000 then we are very sure nothing will going to happen you know we can put her in a, we can offer expectant management but come to the situation number second everything is same but the beta hcg in between 1000 to when, uh, 1500 if if this uh, um, comes along with the situation above in that situation we will consider we will consider because something is running in our head you know uh, it may rise very fast or you know any complication might happen so in this situation we will consider so in expectant management only in offer less than 1000 up to 1000 you you just go and offer it but if it is 1000 and in uh, more than 1000 less than 1500 then you can consider okay then you can consider so rest all other parameters for um, offer and consider are the same now uh, your patient is on conservative management for ectopic pregnancy so you have to do something you would call call her for follow up so on what days you will call 2 4 and 7 so this follow up is different from the uh, medical man medical tree after the follow up um, that we do for medical treatment okay so this uh, here we are calling patient on day 2 day 4 and day 7 after original test now what we are doing we are checking their beta hcg level if it is dropped more than 15% uh, from the previous value we are very happy because now this if it is already start on a downfall trend so we we have to repeat weekly until the negative test or less than 20 iu has come so uh, we have to do this so th we are very happy okay because beta hcg started dropping so you have to remember this very well but second situation it is not falling or it is same or it is rising we are in a worry we have to review this woman we have to take advice from the senior person what what to be done now okay so this is about the follow up of expectant um, ectopic pregnancy that is managed expectantly i am repeating it again do your beta hcg test, test second day fourth day seventh day if the fall in beta hcg is more than 15% then we are very happy but we have to follow this woman weekly till negative result negative result means less than 20 iu per uh, liter okay 
but if the if it is not falling that way we are not happy we are uh, we are worried something can go wrong so we will review this woman i'll take help from the senior colleague now coming to so this that's all about expectant management coming to uh, uh, sys, uh, systemic uh, methotrexate so methotrexate what are the criteria okay all uh, like almost these are same kind of criteria there should be no pain it should be unruptured ectopic there should be no heart size should be less than 35 mm beta ecg has to be less than 1500 if it is 1500 uh, beta ecg like we can offer okay because we are very confirmed and there should be no intrauterine pregnancy why because you know if a patient have a, a heterotopic pregnancy that is one inside one outside you can't offer methotrexate to that woman because methotrexate will uh, you know um, uh, absorb both the pregnancies so maybe this woman want intrauterine so unless it is very too much confirmed that there is no intrauterine pregnancy methotrexate cannot be offered okay uh, so uh, these are the criteria for uh, systemic methotrexate uh, uh, all are the same criteria as the expectant management so less than 1500 we offer okay and if we are able to find that there is yes there is no uh, intrauterine pregnancy at the first, first visit we can uh, offer methotrexate now we uh, so uh, uh, here so uh, in the second situation patient is uh, can be offered both type of treatment either medical or surgical so what are the criteria for that either medical or surgical it will be like beta ecg has become high but it is still less than 5000 so in between 1500 to 5000 we have got two options to get okay but the patient will have no pain unruptured ectopic less than 3.5 cm no heart no intrauterine pregnancy compliant patient okay so this is the whole situation now this is the, the picture uh, uh, down is the update from it is from the uh, like uh, gtg okay it is a green top guideline the green top guideline um, that has it came in 2016 okay you already know so if you will find it is the same kind of criteria hemodynamic stability beta ecg is 1500 less than 1500 but it can be up to 5000 so it is same 1500 but less than 5000 no heart no intrauterine pregnancy a uh, compliant patient no allergy so the this part of uh, nice guideline and this uh, like uh, and uh, this is a uh, update from the green top guideline okay this is update from the green top guideline so ba basically uh, in in if the beta ecg level are, are this much you have got two options to offer part 3 people it is very important because one time station has come and this woman has beta ecg of 3000 now she you have to give her options so in that particular station you have to give both options whatever this she decide then uh, you know you have to support her uh, wishes so it is important to remember now if the you have given methotrexate you have to follow this woman now you, now in this they are doing a uh, two uh, two times beta ecg 4 and 7 now and uh, what they are doing if if it is falling by 15% in that particular situation we are doing repeat uh, weekly less than 15 iu or less than uh, or, le or or according to nice guideline less than 20 okay but green top guideline 15 iu then but if it is not decreasing then we are worried we will assess the patient again we'll do uh, tvs again we can consider it uh, for the re methotrexate dose or surgical then after reviewing the patient we have to decide the criteria so this is the uh, protocol of intramuscular methotrexate from update from the green top guideline now th uh, this type of stage, this type if this type of scenario comes we are very happy because we have got no confusion so ectopic pregnancy patient is coming with pain you can't do anything just operate beta is, uh, it is 30 more than 3.5 cm fetal heart is there 
beta scg more than 5000 go and operate okay so these uh, this if the, this kind of scenario comes it is real you know it is very uh, clear that the surgery will only be the uh, will will be the only choice okay patient with symptomatic patient with pain sec more than uh, 3.5 cm fetal heart there beta scg more than 5000 now again coming to uh, what you are taking this patient in what type of surgery you will of, uh, do or you will offer either selfingectomy or selfingostomy so if the patient uh, like uh, that decision will be done that decision will be done about the risk factor so these are the risk factor for uh, infertility previous ectopic tubal damage previous abdominal surgery previous pid so in your uh, question if you find or uh, any of this for uh, factor then the answer, you have to tick answer selfingotomy okay it is selfingotomy so but on the other side so uh, other, uh, so consider selfingotomy as an alternate if the woman has a risk factor but if the patient has no risk factor so best approach will be what will be selfingectomy and why i am calling uh, i'm saying this in best approach because if the, uh, there is a recurrence of ectopic recurrence is 10% so better so if there is no issues with the, um, the uh, like uh, no fertility reducing factors are present so better idea will be to go for selfingectomy uh, so this is one choice if these factors are present in your question answer will be selfingotomy okay but if the selfingotomy you will do in 20% of the patient they will require further treatment either in medical method exit or surgical selfingectomy this number is important question come from this number okay even for the part 3 people if you are offering uh, your patient selfingotomy then you have to say that this much women will require further treatment now if uh, after selfingotomy we have to do uh, like we have to follow this patient up why because sometimes that pro some of the trophoblasts they may remain retain behind so beta scg measurement can should be done after one week of selfingotomy it has to be repeated weekly till negative so this um, it is beta scg okay but if we have done selfingectomy of for our patient we are very sure uh, because the whole tube is removed so we can just do low sensitivity urine pregnancy test after three week time this is very important from every line of this you will find question in the exam every line has got question okay so um, uh, and these all these numbers selfing uh, like uh, further treatment in 20% or one in five women follow up of selfingotomy weekly and uh, one, after one week and weekly till negative follow up after selfingectomy upt after three weeks okay so all every part of this will be full of questions so any question till now any question no question okay now coming to ntd profile axis what they say that a 250 uh, iu or 50 microgram of ntd profile axis has to be given if uh, if a surgical management of ectopic pregnancy is done but if the uh, no ntd has to be given if there is a medical management for ectopic if it is a threatened miscarriage complete miscarriage and pull you have to remember this because the question come directly from there so that's all about the ectopic pregnancy update that had come from this guideline so uh, now i'm moving to the uh, to miscarriage any one of you have got any question can ask me otherwise i'll be just speaking about it no questions okay now this is just in you know uh, i will not uh, these are the factors uh, like uh, that uh, if these are there chances of miscarriage are high i am not speaking re reading everything but what you have to remember sing single largest cause for sp uh, sporadic miscarriage 15% of all cases is chromosomal abnormality okay you, maybe you can get any question from there even the uh, uh, this question also i have seen Uh, in some infection associated with miscarriage, that is listeria and toxoplasma. Okay, 
so the, the, this much information the uh, shaishta no now you see shaishta okay shaishta has asked a question so if the medical management of a topic is there if the uh, threatened miscarriage is there if the uh, complete miscarriage is there or pull is there entity not required but i read somewhere dr priyata that uh, for ectopies both medical and surgical we have to give ntd some See, guideline uh, i have read i know i i am aware of that uh, if you there are different guideline and there will be different answers but what you have to follow is the recent one two uh, there had been no update for ectopic guideline after 2019 uh like a topic a gtg green top guideline came in 2016 and ntd guideline came in 2014 so this is the recent one nice a topic 2019 is a recent one so we have to uh, like uh, it is advisable to follow the updated okay this some terms are important because you may get question from there what is biochemical pregnancy loss if the pregnancy is not located on the screen but the beta hcg is positive empty sac sac is there a uh, uh, empty sac is sac with absent like fet fetal pole is not there okay fetal loss when the crl is there but fetal activity is not there early pregnancy loss le less than 12 weeks so uh, okay early pregnancy lo loss confirmed Uh, fet fetus is there but no fetal heart delayed miscarriage and early pregnancy loss late pregnancy loss when the loss of fetal heart more than 12 weeks pregnancy of unknown location or pull that we'll discuss later on also we are not able to identify pregnancy on the scan but the beta hcg is positive okay these are the terms that you know you just can go through once because sometime you will get question and uh, what important thing i'll explain it again Uh, like uh, a embryonic pregnancy they they have given the term early fetal demise so this term the this table two tables are important for part 2 people no nothing to be done by part 3 people blighted ovum they are causing uh, they are saying silent miscarriage these tables is from strategy for part 2 people just go uh, 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 once so that if any questions come you are in a position to answer more important thing what you have to understand is the pregnancy of uncertain viability this slide is if not from uh, uh, not from any guideline okay this term i wanted to explain you because you will find many uh, uh, questions and this term is used so if you have got a clear idea you'll be able to answer the question well so what is pregnancy of uncertain viability intrauterine pregnancy uh, it is intrauterine pregnancy okay but the criteria ultrasound criteria to con, uh, to confidently say this is a viable pregnancy is not there so in this pvu puv pregnancy is there pregnancy is intrauterine but ultrasound criteria to say it as a live pregnancy is not there okay and what are these criteria if you are doing tvs crl is less than 7 and no fetal heart crl less than 7 no fetal heart msd less than 25 no embryo or pole these are the two criteria where you will say this is pregnancy of uncertain viability so it is important to understand because uh, 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 if you understand then you you will be able to answer your question confidently okay so this is uh, pregnancy of uncertain viability now few things uh, i had to say about early pregnancy assessment unit so usually a uh, few thing uh, uh, they they uh, scan can be done and beta hcg measurement can be done in uh, usually in the uk it is a referral system so you, uh, gp has to refer A, a, a gp is the person in the community who will be responsible for the care he would refer this woman uh, or any other patient to the hospital but uh, in uh, early pregnancy assessment unit self referral can be uh, can be done like patient can go without a referral from gp if they have got previous 
recurrent miscarriage mo ectopic pregnancy or molar pregnancy so these are the women they can self refer themselves i have seen question from this line therefore i have put it here apart from this if any pain emergency any bleeding is there this patient has to be reviewed by health professional it could be gp it could be any doctor in accident and emergency so once they will review this woman then only she can go to early pregnancy assessment service now diagnosis so the tool for diagnosis of uh, pregnancy is pvs okay this is the best but if any associated pathology is there then consideration for tas or trans abdominal um, ultra uh, trans abdominal scan can be done okay so what is uh, actually we do if we if, if we do a scan and we see fetal heart we, we are very happy pregnancy live pregnancy is confirmed but if the fetal heart is not there so we'll be able to see pole if we are able to see pole we have to measure the length of it but if the pole is also not there then sac is there then we have to measure mst okay so this is the routine thing those who are doing ultrasound they will understand this well and it is not very difficult for other people also now you will get hundreds of question from this slide so it is important to understand this okay now if you are doing tvs then if you find crl less than 7 or msd less than 7 then only one is one answer you will give second scan after 7 days time so if it is less less like less crl then 7 less msd then 25 call this woman after 7 days okay it is a fixed answer now second situation you were doing scan today and it is more more what is more it is 7 or more msd 25 or more then you have got two choice either you can call your colleague today or you will take second opinion on the viability today only okay or if your colleague is not there you can again call this woman after 7 days okay so this is the sum sum up uh, uh, so on the tvs if it is less less call patient after 7 days if it is more more um, take opinion from uh, your colleague call someone or call, call this woman after 7 days so uh, any time if the tvs is done and any issues has come up you will call this woman after 7 days okay second situation if you are doing tas abdominal ultrasound fetal heart you are not able to see only pole is there just measure this pole call this woman after 2 weeks time and if the pole is not there only sac is there just take the measurement of sac and uh, uh second uh, and call this woman after 14 days time so if you are doing tva uh, tas you are having any problem answer is only one call this woman after 2 weeks okay so this part you have to understand i it appears very confusing when we read this guideline so i try to tabulate it in a manner with a mnemonic so you are able to understand like uh, retain in your head now this is the summary what I, i was able to make so on the tvs if crl is less than 7 msd less than 25 call this woman after 7 days one part gone another part crl more msd more call this woman after 7 days or call colleague for help call colleague for help so only this is the situation where you can take second opinion okay and on the tas if you are not able to see anything call this woman after 2 weeks time so this is the maximum this is the only like summary i was able to make if you just uh, understand this uh, you know summary you are all that that question comes that will be very easy is it clear is it clear yes ma'am yes ma'am okay and if the patient has threatened miscarriage nothing you have to do you you have to uh, you know uh, ask this woman to come after two weeks time and um, if the bleeding uh, like if the bleeding is there after two weeks then you have to assess her and if the bleeding stops you have to arrange routine antenatal care for this woman so this is again a new thing 
that has been added in this guideline so this is important for both part 2 and 3 people okay now uh, miscarriage management like an ectopic pregnancy is done three types three types of management is there expectant management medical management and surgical management now coming to expectant management what is expectant management that means you are doing nothing expectant management like she has to just see uh, 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 do nothing and for 7 to 14 days and this they offer as a first line okay expectant management 7 to 14 days is in first line management now all the women uh, you will not be offered this expectant management as a first line for example which are the women this you have to understand well because uh, you know um, that will help in answering your question if any patient is a, a increased risk of hemorrhage for example she is a late first trimester of pregnancy so pregnancy is big chances of hemorrhage bleeding is more so um, uh, we will this, this woman will not be a, uh, um, like candidate for the expectant management second if any previous traumatic experience like stillbirth miscarriage aph already she has suffered a lot don't give her expectant management as an option if she's at a risk of hemorrhage because of bleeding disorder she would require uh, and uh, she's a jehovah's witness she will not accept blood or any infection you can't allow this kind of woman to wait for two weeks time so you will get a scenario so if all this is given in a scenario expectant management will not be suitable for these women okay so be very clear now if you have you have offered expectant management then a patient is comfortable no bleeding no pain so what you will say do your you uh, pregnancy test after three week time but on the other side patient comes back to you she, she says i have got a bleeding doctor and you know I, even i have uh, pain has not started so what you will do you will reassess the woman and you will offer her all management again and if she want to continue expectant management she can continue for 14 days more i don't know how the people can you know uh, uh, opt this expectant management second time like first time they will uh, uh, wait and watch for 7 to 14 days second time they again you know uh, uh, can opt for um, expectant management an infection rate uh, is three percent with expectant uh, treatment this line is from strategy now medical management uh, as the pregnancy has already miscarried so mifepristone is not required only what we have to do you have to give them uh, mesoprostol it can be given vaginally or orally missed miscarriage 800 microgram single dose in complete miscarriage, uh, 600 milligram single dose. You will get many questions from this line. And once bleeding and pain settled, UPT after three weeks. Okay. So um, why we are doing UPT? Because we want to make it sure that there is no ectopic pregnancy or no molar pregnancy. So this line, this uh, like uh, that slide is real important, and you will get many questions from this slide coming to surgical management surgical management either it could be uh, mva or it could be uh, like a suction what we do in theater so this is the flow chart to um, for the miscarriage this is from nice guideline what they say woman is a confirmed miscarriage offer uh, med uh, expectant medical management so uh, if it is medical management, you have to give them information, support, treatment, and pregnancy test after three weeks' time. If it is surgery, you have to think when you have to give NTD. Now, it is very important. You will get question from pull. And pull it, uh, you will get many questions from pull. And the understanding of pull is very important. What is the pull? Pull is a condition where pregnancy test is positive, but there is no evidence of intrauterine and extrauterine pregnancy. Like that we, I have a patient has gone uh, done the uh, pregnancy test that is positive but when I did scan today I'm not able to see any intrauterine or extrauterine pregnancy this condition is called as a pull 
or pregnancy of unknown location. What is the treatment for this? You have to do beta SCG treatment, um, the beta SCG measurement 14 hours apart. Now, then you have to calculate percent, percentage. If it is more than 63%, we are very happy. This will be a healthy pregnancy. So we will, we will advise this woman to go for TBS within seven to 14 days time once beta SCG crosses 1500, okay? But on the other side, if the fall is there and, uh, and fall is more than 50%, then also we are very happy that this pregnancy is going to miscarry, uh, uh, like this is going to dissolve by itself. So we will call this woman, we'll ask this woman to do low uh, urine pregnancy test after two weeks time. But if we find uh, that after 48 hours, the value is in between, uh, in between the both uh, values, like decrease is less than 50 and increase is less than 63. Then we are not able to, you know, make any sort of diagnosis. We, this woman will, uh, will be sent for the clinical review within 24 hours. Why we are worried? We are worried about ectopic pregnancy. Okay, so uh, you will get a number of questions for, for, uh, for this and uh, better uh, how to calculate, like uh, how to know that what will be the answer, that when we'll be discussing the answer, it will come and the things are very clear. About the pull, there is a talk also there in 2015. It also gave a flow chart of percentages. That appears to be very confusing. I'm, uh, but once uh, once the NICE guideline has given this criteria for diagnosis of pull, management of pull, then the life has become very easy. So just read this much uh, from the NICE guideline and answer, you know, has to come from the NICE guideline only. Now, this is a, uh, this is a chart from that talk 2015. You, it is just in the flow chart. So if the patient uh, has a pull, She's a, she has pain. Pain means, any pain means ectopic. Uh, we are worried for ectopic. Then we uh, consider laparoscopy. But the patient is stable and pain-free. Expectant management can be done. But patient is, if the patient is hemodynamically, hemodynamically unstable or she has pain, we have to consider laparoscopy. So this is the algorithm for the treatment of pull if you, uh, from the talk 2015. Now this is the flow chart of pull from the NICE guideline. This is the same we discussed. So if uh, pull is there, we have to me measure beta SCG levels. So if, if increase, if high becomes more than 63, we're very happy. It is intrauterine pregnancy. We will explain them NICE pathway of antenatal care. If uh, it is decreasing, and if it, if it, if, uh, like uh, decreases more than 50 percent, so this, this is solving itself. But if, uh, if it is in between, if it is in between 50% and 63%, then we are worried. We will send this patient for clinical assessment or for the clinical review. Okay, so this is the update about the RPOC. And this is from, you know, uh, this is from strategy. So what they say, if RPOC 15 to uh, like uh, 1.5 centimeter to 5 centimeter, uh, all three options of treatment can be given for to this woman. If it is more than five centimeter, if this uh, if this is more than five centimeter, okay, yeah, it is more than five centimeter. Or but the patient has no bleeding. All three options can be given. But if the patient is bleeding heavily, we have to consider this patient for surgical evacuation. If this is infected, uh, surgical evacuation. We, uh, if any infection, we can't do any conservation. Conservative management, surgical evacuation has to be uh, under the antibiotic cover. Okay, this is from strategy. Sometimes you find question from RPOC also. Now this is the la uh, last, uh, like what update I wanted to give. Uh, about the mesoprostol. Uh, mesoprostol is a PGE1, okay? It is prostaglandin, PGE1. Half-life is 20 to 40 minutes. Side effect is nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, uh, uh, dizziness, fever, fever, and chills. You might have given when you give per rectal meso or when you give meso to any patient, 
they they have fever so we have to give, offer them paracetamol and this is the chart that would explain uh, action, uh, onset of uh, action okay so th that will explain the onset of uh, action so uh, sublingual like it is taking 11 minutes and vaginal it is taking 20 minutes so whenever we are giving sublingual we are uh, like uh, giving lesser dose in vaginal we were giving high dose okay now coming to mifeprestone this much knowledge is important it is synthetic steroid with anti progesterone activity so it is uh, you may get question from here synthetic steroid with anti progesterone activity it do it have a long half life therefore we have to wait for 36 to 48 hours so its half life is 25 to 30 hours it the way it works it cause blockage of progesterone and glucocorticoid receptor so two receptor it is blocking progesterone and glucocorticoid that causes a, a decidual necrosis increased release of prostaglandin increased uterine sensitivity of prostaglandin and cervical ripening so because if you have given mifepristone then lesser doses of pge1 or prostaglandins will be uh, required to induce delivery okay so this is the mechanism of action this also you have to know because this basic knowledge is important you may get question from there so that's all uh, about all these guideline updates that i had to give if any one of you have got any question can answer i can answer otherwise now i'll be giving you questions any question no questions then now you have to give uh, questions answers so you can uh, lopa two questions of abortion law is coming so i'll be explaining in that okay so this is the question uh, what is the answer b very good answer is b answer is b ma'am b again a no how it can be a who said a can in tvs we uh, 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 there are two options either we will we'll take help of senior colleague or we call them after seven mm -hmm. so it has to be a sorry it has to be 25 mm or more then we have to do it in uh, this thing no all the patient after uh, yes in... but for tvs for tvs it is seven days for tas it is two weeks okay B. Yes, B. Why B? Because they uh, they have already done two scan, and there is no fetal heart. So if there is no fetal heart after two scan with a CRL of nine, it has to be missed miscarriage. This is a very good question. And B? CRL is three. Yeah. A. A, very good, A. Hmm. So why it can't be B? Because in B, CRL is 3. So uh, at 3, we cannot consider it as an, any miscarriage. We have to uh, uh, like uh, observe it till 7. B. 
inevitable abortion yeah cervix is 4 cm it has to be inevitable I'm C. Yes, it is C. CRL, uh, because the CRL is 5 mm, so if the CRL is less than 7, 7 uh, mm, so we have to call this woman after 7 days. C again. Look for the better answer. Then B. Yes, very good B. Therefore, whenever this is the uh, message, whenever you see that uh, uh, one, your choice answer is there, always see uh, all other choices. You may find some better answer also. Your new answer is mesoprostol 800 microgram. So uh, you will uh, mark C and you will say, OK, I have done. My answer is correct, but it's wrong because Viso uh, plus NCI NZ is the better answer. So now I'll read this question. 20 year old woman uh, attended the uh, pre uh, early pregnancy assessment unit. She has six weeks of pregnancy with bleeding. Ultrasound shows viable intrauterine pregnancy. She wishes termination. She is not in <coughs> any relationship, halfway in university degree, lives in Scotland, lives in Scotland, and she doesn't want this pregnancy. So what will be the ground for termination? C, ground C. C. It is C. So what is C? Now you see continuation. If the continuation of pregnancy would involve risk, greater than pregnancy terminated or injury of physical mental health of a pregnant woman so uh, if this is the, this is a category c but uh, in this if the scenario is same but if they write that uh, like um, uh, anything about like she will be in a problem to take care of her existing child same scenario patient has some previous child and she will have problem in taking care of that. Now, what will be the ground for abortion that time? D, D it will be, no? D. It will be D then. It will be D then. Okay. So, if uh, she has got problem with continuation of pregnancy, then it will be C. But if any child is there in her family, like any previous children, will be at a risk because because of this pregnancy then this abortion will become in category d and if any uh, mental uh, like any uh, baby is coming out with mental handicapness or incompatible life it will be category e if emergency is there like uh, patient uh, um, like uh, for example patient has come in emergency 12 11 weeks pregnant and she is bleeding profusely so to save her life, you are doing abortion in emergency. That will be a category uh, that will come under G. Okay, that will come under G. But again, like uh, uh, if a patient is going to have some uh, permanent injury because of this pregnancy, permanent injury because of this pregnancy, then in that particular situation, you are doing abortion. That will come in category G. Okay, that will come in category G. Uh, oh, Ma'am, what is the difference between G and uh, B? G is a uh, emergency. Patient is admit has come with some emergency problem. That uh, B is normal patient. No, no emergency is there. Okay. Is it clear? Yeah. Okay. Now I'll read this question for you again because there are two questions for this I got. So 32 years old woman, two children with 20 weeks uh, pregnant attend antenatal clinic in South London. 
her consultant told that her early investigations confirmed that baby has down syndrome she already has baby with down syndrome and autism she is not sure mentally physically financially to look after another child with down syndrome she is thinking of termination i think i have already explained that so what Mommy. will be the b yeah it is d no how why it is e down syndrome down okay who said e i'll i have to explain e is only if the baby is being born with life incompetency down syndrome baby they will live for live for 60 years there is no problem there is no threat to their life okay got it someone who said e is it clear Yes, ma'am. Please explain the clause. I'm I'm getting confused. Oh God! Now, just now I explained. So now in this patient, in this uh, like, in this uh, uh, this question we did, she wants to termination because she uh, she is re uh, she is uh, studying. She doesn't want this pregnancy. So for herself, for this woman herself, she doesn't want pregnancy pregnancy. so okay. it will be category c okay it will be category c but if any problem is there to her pre existing child for example this she has okay. got one baby with down syndrome and she won't be able to take care with another baby with down syndrome so for okay. this good care of baby that is already there she is taking this is an of termination so she is taking termination of ter uh, decision of termination for the sake of previous baby so it is category d okay 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 how is clear ekdam absolutely okay read this repeat you pt in 2 weeks a you have to give me reason fall is more than 50% how much is the fall how much is the fall okay okay yes. less, than, less than less than 15% so we have to seek senior advice Mm. now and uh, okay those who are not able to understand i'll tell you so 500 and 300 how much is the fall fall is 200 and if you calculate the percentage how you will calculate percentage 200 divided by 500 into 100 so it will come 40% so fall is 40% 40% fall is less than 50% so it will come in 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 third category so refer for clinical review ap e, e p a u in 24 hours so this would be the answer so in this in this because this question is from the older version of guideline so answer will become seen, uh, uh, seek senior advice is it clear for everyone yes ma'am because this guideline has become new full treatment has become new percentages has become new so answer has changed understanding is important but now uh, now the things has become more clear and better previously you know i when i was doing this exam i used to struggle with percentage of fall but now the life is very good only remember this table and your life is done okay same kind of question a Okay, why a? More than 50%. because doctor the fall is more than fifty uh, percent, so we will follow her after two weeks. Very good. So uh, her fall is more than ninety percent. Okay, fall is more than fall is four fifty. Four fifty is ninety percent. So uh, fall is more than ninety percent.
so uh, it will come in this category okay so it is um, upd after two weeks so a is the answer so you are right so just calculate like this calculate like this Fourteen days, excellent. Fourteen days. Transabdominal scan. It only one answer could be there. Fourteen days. Now, if you are getting, you know, in your exam, if you are getting less time to read a question, just see whether it is TAS or TVS. Follow the flow chart. Your life is easy. Here the problem in this question is there they have not mentioned whether it is a TVS or TAS. Okay, so you can't answer. So uh, if in your question TVS is given second scan after seven days, TAS is given second scan after fourteen days. A ma'am. Yes, A. This miscarriage, 800 microgram mesoprostol. Yes, it is C. So uh, this is the direct from the guideline line. Expectant management. Woman is at increased risk of hemorrhage. Okay. Answer C. B. Yeah, it is D, respect autonomy of patient, okay? Whatever she wish, you have to respect her wishes. A. Yes, A, direct from the guidelines line. Inform the woman uh, uh, what to expect while waiting. Within waiting time, repeat scan, no detrimental effect on the outcome of pregnancy. E. Yes, after expecting management, you have to do UPT after three weeks time. E. This is incomplete. So in for D, D. Yeah, incomplete, yes. Yeah, for incomplete miscarriage, single dose, 600 microgram. C. C. D. C. C. Actually, C. No. C. Previously, 100 milligram. No. Doxycycline is 100 milligram. No. Just uh, um, uh, previously, doxycycline two hours before was an option. Question from old guideline, but according to the new guideline, doxy 100 milligrams two times daily for three days. Okay. So just remember what is given in the new guideline.
ए वेरी गुड सो दिस इज द कैलकुलेशन नाउ राइज इज देयर एट एट हंड्रेड इज द राइज सो राइज इज फिफ्टी परसेंट सो राइज इज लेस देन सिक्सटी थ्री परसेंट सो दिस वुमेन वुड रिक्वायर क्लिनिकल रिव्यू so okay this rise is double ma'am yeah no from from 800 it has become 1600 okay so uh, how much is the rise 800 are you only okay it has a double dia so it has increased yep. 100% okay yes so uh, uh, usg scan has to be there so rise is more than 63% okay it is almost it is doubled so it is 100% 100% double is there okay so in this particular situation rise is more than 63% so tvs after 7 to 14 days so uh, tvs after 7 to 14 days would be the answer according to new guideline but in this scan in this uh, nothing has been given so usg scan after 4 to 7 days because after 1500 iu scan has been done to be done and it is this is on, uh, already 1600 this is already 1600 so answer will be uh, usg scan 7, 4 to 7 days A Yes A If the drop is more than 50% UPD after 14 days A A Any fluid in POD rupture ectopic surgery is the option no risk factor given so selfingectomy so left selfingectomy is an answer B Yeah, it has to be D. E. Yes. E. D, uh, Yeah, so this is they are doing TVS, CRS less than seven, uh, call after seven days. B, ah, uh, twenty percent, ma'am, twenty percent. D, one in five. B Yes B first line management is expectant A A 250 micrograms Okay, I have already shown the answer.
here the two times can has been done serial is seven no fetal heart so it is missed miscarriage H. H. HCG is more than 5,000. Uh, one risk factor is there. Um, so, uh, like uh, going for self ingostomy, laparoscopic self ingostomy is the answer. This is the last question, I think. G. G is what selfingectomy. But she has got a no fetal heart. Beta SCG is 3500, like less than 5000. Beta SCG less than 5000. Sec is less, less than 35. So why surgery? No free Doctor, it could be methotrexate as well, but I thought it is uh, like from 3,500, it has gone up to 3,800. So I thought that we can go for self injectomy. Otherwise, methotrexate. Yes, it has to be like uh, methotrexate should be the answer because the clue, no free fluid. So there is no rupture. Okay. So it is a small a sac less than 35 mm, beta SCG. Uh, yeah, it raised, but it is still less than 5,000. Okay, so uh, beta CG eight, uh, less than 5,000, sec less than 35, no FSH, no free fluid, there is no rupture. So you can easily go for intramuscular methostrexate. Okay, that's all about it. So any one of you have got any question can ask me. Otherwise, thank you for joining. All the best for your exams. Any question? Thanks a lot, doctor. Okay.